the debunking of a scientific phenomenon known as global warming. What kind of damage will global warming cause? Drought, extreme weather changes, flooding, frequent hurricanes, are all of these possible effects of global warming? Let's hear what you had to say. Global warming is caused by like pollution, air pollution, uh, hole in the holes in the ozone and excess um, greenhouse gases. Reduction of ozone gases, I guess. Uh, I don't know, pollution. Pollutants from uh, from businesses, personal use of hairspray. Uh, I think somebody's just blown away out of proportion for uh, their own political gain. There's no doubt that the rest of the world is looking to the United States to give a lead. Uh, the ice flows are melting. There's no doubt that global warming is occurring. But I think that it will cause major changes in animal and plant habitats. So not only human life, but also other animals and plants. Just melting of the ice caps. Uh, sea levels will keep increasing. Now that we have heard what the public has to say regarding global warming, let's talk with some experts in the field. This is a clip from an October 10th airing of a Weather Channel special on global warming. When people think about global warming, they're thinking, oh, it's always going to be warmer and uh, we're never going to see cold weather again. That's not what's going to happen. It's not what has happened so far. What happens is that the present regime of cold and warm days just shifts, so you get a few uh, more warmer days and a few less colder days. We're learning from the ancient climate record that, that I study is that the climate itself is capable of changing much, much faster than we previously thought in about a decade. What's happened so far is actually unprecedented in the last thousand years. We've been able to show that conclusively now from the paleoclimate records. It has not been this warm in the past 1,000 years at least. Let's talk with Dr. Jim Hoshel. One of the arguments for the discrepancy between satellite temperature measurements uh, and ground-based measurements was the so-called heat ion effect. This heat ion effect now is, is essentially a moot point because uh, there were errors in the Originally, in the satellite measurements that when corrected made the temperatures, sets of temperatures in agreement. Land based and satellite measurements are now in agreement. And what this means is there is a basis for saying that the Earth fertility is warming. And I think that's accepted uh, reasonably well by the scientific community. That clearly, the Earth has warmed. What is not clear, and what may may not be clear, even with the best of computer modeling, is how much and uh, when that will occur. The best estimates from recent uh, climate circulation models suggest that perhaps a range of uh, temperature rise might be 1.9 to 2.9 degrees. This But by no means is it clear, proof positive, that the warming is necessarily man's doing, totally. Uh, the warming that's projected by the circulation models of anywhere from 2 degrees Celsius to 6 degrees Celsius could never occur and be accounted for simply on the basis of concentration of CO2, and that there must be some other effect, like the influence of water, that amplifies the warming effect. In terms of we can focus on cleaning up the atmosphere, cleaning up the air, cleaning up the you know, pollutants in the air, then we go a long way to minimizing the greenhouse gases and then temperature rise, assuming that there's a connection between greenhouse gases and rising temperature. Let's talk with 
with Dr. Marco Santos. It doesn't matter. It, the atmosphere provides a blanket for the planet. And uh, in a sense, say, oxygen and nitrogen are terrible gases for a blanket. So what you can see in Michigan is on a clear night, the temperature can go down to you know, zero in the winter. But when it's cloudy, the temperature doesn't go that, that far down. And if you pay attention, when it snows, it's 32 degrees. It's only after it snows and it clears that the temperature goes way down. So the greenhouse effect is just that. It's a, it's a cloud and water gases a, providing a blanket for the, for the planet Earth. And if we didn't have greenhouse gases, there would be no life on planet Earth. So it's important to, to get certain things straight. In the atmosphere, you need molecules that are more complex than two atoms. To, to absorb any significant amount of infrared radiation. And uh, so, you know, any molecule, any triatomic molecule or larger will, will absorb this, this, uh, this infrared. And, uh, I mean, it's as simple as that. I mean, it's not, not like a big mystery, only CO2. No, water vapor. The scientific community, from what we have learned, acknowledges that global warming is making an impact on our Earth. What remains to be disputed is how much of an impact will be made. One question that still remains is what will be done by our country, our government, to stop global warming. We're here with Brent, our political correspondent, who will provide further information of the debate regarding global warming. Thank you, Lisa. The Kyoto Protocol is an international agreement adopted in Kyoto, Japan in 1997. This proposal attempts to limit greenhouse gas emissions primarily carbon dioxide to 1990 levels. There is much debate over the utility and practicality of such a broad proposal. The Kyoto Protocol assumes that global warming is due primarily to human-based greenhouse gas emissions. This proposal is an excellent example of the misconceptions surrounding global warming, since it negates the involvement of non-human factors. In order for any useful legislation to be considered, all other factors concerning global warming must be taken into account. This is especially true with such a broad proposal as the Kyoto Protocol. The Earth we live in faces many challenges in upcoming decades. What we as a society do to improve the quality of life for humans has a lot to do with the environment and global warming. Hopefully, we have made you question the critics and rethink your position on global warming. From our presentation, you can see that humans are not the only cause of global warming. Much information still needs to be discussed and debated to learn how global warming will affect generations to come. Thank you for joining us. In, in science, the feelings are not important. You have to go to the objective cause and effect. You need to observe and, and, and see. 